Today we're going to take a look at the Flickr integration within the 2014 World Cup application. So what we want to do is be able to tap on a row. When we tap on that row, we want to do a search of Flickr. And we want to get a count of the number of photos that are available for that player. And then when we tap on the button, we want to size the image so that it fills the screen as best we can and bring uh, an appropriate size image in. And then we want to have the next and the previous buttons available if there are more than one image. And uh, other things that we might want to do is if there are no images, well, we don't want to see a, uh, a photo button because there are no images. Or in this case, notice the count bubble here, adjust. There we've got six photos. Here we've got 20 photos. And here we've got one photo. When we only have one photo, we don't want to show the previous and next buttons. So we've actually got quite a bit going on. And let's take a look at how we did that. We're going to start out taking a look at the panel card that's going to contain the images themselves. So the way we're going to display these images is going to be we're going to use jQuery here. I'm using that because I wanted to show jQuery integration. There are a lot of ways you could do this, but this is the way I chose to do it. So we're going to use a plugin called the Cycle plugin that will work with jQuery. And uh, so what we need to do was set up a freeform container within a panel card. And let's go take a look at how I set that up. So here I've defined my um, CSS that I'd like to use. Uh, an important thing to notice here is that I'm going to set this width on the center image class uh, to 320 pixels. Now, based on the device that you're uh, viewing this on, that might not be 320 pixels. So we're going to dynamically adjust that based on the device size after we get these images. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. So this is all just CSS styling information. And over here, you can see we've just got a div uh, with an ID of player images, and that's where the images are going to appear. We've also got a, a panel footer, and we've got another freeform container here. This freeform container has just got a definition of the buttons that I'm going to use here to show the previous and next buttons. Uh, and also there's a show hide expression here. So more than one photo has to be available in order for this container to appear because we don't want to show previous and next if there's only one photo. And if there are no photos, we're not going to show the uh, photos button on the parent panel card. So let's take a look at how we acquire the images. When do we do the search for the images? And that appears back in the player's uh, list. So when you tap on a row on the players list, let's go look at what we do there. So on the in the list events here, on click, uh, we do a lot of things here. So we get the player stats and then we get the weight and height and so on and make some adjustments there. But the last thing that we do here is get Flickr images. So we're going to populate the, the images div that we just took a look at with images if they're available with this function prior to ever switching to that panel card. Let's go take a look at that function. So here we have the get Flickr images function and we pass in the search name which is the first name and last name of the player. So as we typically do we're going to bring up a weight spinner to let the user know something's going on. And now I'm going to start using jQuery. And uh, so here, what we do is we just clean up. If there were any previous images, just remove them from this div. Um, we just want to start out with nothing. We don't want to just keep adding to um, this player images uh, div because we would have the previous player's images there. So we need to clean that on out. Then we're going to use uh, jQuery to make a call to the Flickr API. And we're going to do a search on their public photos for the first name and last name. And we ask for a response in JSON. Now, so when the response comes in, what we do is take a look at the, uh, the length of, of the list that comes back. So 
And then we adjust this underbar photo count variable, which we, ass which we assign to dialog object.appvars, again, keeping our namespace nice and clean. Uh, so now we know how many images we brought back. And the maximum that it will bring back is 20 images. Uh, that's just hard coded into the Flickr public feeds. So we make an assumption that we're going to get nothing back. And then what we do is take a look at the photo count. Uh, if it's greater than zero, we're going to go ahead and adjust the photo, photo count uh, inner HTML. So this is how we adjust that count. And we'll take a look at the HTML and the CSS that does that. But basically, we're going to replace the inner HTML in the div called photo count with the number of images that we're pulling back. And the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the size of the uh, screen that we're on. So we're going to look at the dialog dot component name we're using this placeholder here and looking at the underbar panel object width and that's going to tell us the width of the screen that we're displaying this on so if we're on an ipad it's going to be different than an iphone and and if so we're going to adjust this image accordingly so we're going to set our image width we're going to go ahead and and then go through each particular item and look at the item uh, media.m is the photo file name. And the M means it's a medium size image. But we actually want to use a higher res image if the image width is greater than 480. So here, what I do is if the image width is greater than 480, I replace the underbar M with the underbar B, which is a bigger image. So, uh, so say, for example, on a tablet like the iPad, we want to bring in the bigger image. It's going to look better when it's displayed on the tablet. Then we go ahead and add an image with uh, the source as our photo file name. And we add the class of center image. And we add that to the div called player images. So here we're going to adjust the width on all of the pictures so that they fit properly within the device's uh, width on the screen. And here what we're doing is we're grabbing everything that has a class of center image. We're adjusting the CSS property of width to our computed image width. Then assuming that we've got more than one image, we're going to go ahead and attach to the previous and next buttons this uh, cycle function that we're going to call when you hit the previous or next buttons. And we go ahead and just hide the wait message and we switch over to the panel card. Now let's go back to where this all starts. And it all starts when we are displaying the player list. When you tap on a row here, we're going to transition to the player details and statistics panel layout. And this is where we have the button that's going to display the Flickr photos. So when we transition to this panel layout, we already know whether or not we've got Flickr images. So let's take a look at the text that we've got in here for this button. And a lot of people don't realize that you can put HTML in here, but you certainly can. And so I've got styling information, so the CSS in here. And I've also got um, a layout for exactly what I want to appear as the label on this button. And you'll notice that I've set up a span with an ID of photo count. And then we're going to adjust this inner HTML dynamically that will have the count of the number of images that we've returned. Assuming that's more than one, we're going to display it. So you'll notice there's a show hide expression of Flickr photos available. And let's go look at uh, what that does. So Flickr photos available is just going to look at the count. So we're just going to return. If the count is greater than zero, we're going to re return true. If not, we return false. And we have a function here called more than one photo available. And if the photo count is greater than one, we return true. This is how we hide the container that contains the buttons in the panel footer for previous and next. 
So let's go back to this button here and take a look at the click event. All we have to do at this point is transition that panel into view and, uh, and we should be ready to display the Flickr images. So at this point I've, I've shown you uh, how we're acquiring the images through Flickr and let's just take a look again. So we click on players, we click on the row, we adjust the um, image count here, click on photos, and we just start cycling through all the photos. Go back, back again, another player, cycle through the photos again. Now let's, let's show you how it, uh, it works in terms of the sizing. So let's bring up the iPad, for example. So here we've got a much wider screen. Let's go ahead and, and select a player. And now you'll see that the image is larger and it's sized appropriately. And this is nice because this will work with all these different uh, devices. So we're getting a, a nice sized image and it's sized appropriately for the device. So here I've shown you the, all of the work that was involved with the Flickr integration with the 2014 World Cup application. The last thing that I wanted to take a look at was how do we handle the about screen. So when we bring the application up, there's a button called about. Let's take a look at that. So here we see the about button and when we, we tap on the about button, we're going to bring up a panel and this panel is going to have information about the application. And there's a couple of buttons in here. There's one button that'll bring you to the alpha website. Here we're going to call the PhoneGap in-app browser so that you don't leave the application when you click on it. You don't launch Safari. It just brings up an in-app uh, browser and you can, you can you know, see the alpha website and then you can dismiss it and you're right within the al application. There's also a link down here to send feedback email and that will link directly to the uh, the email client that's on the device and it, it fills out the to and uh, subject information automatically. So let's see how that was done. So when we take a look at the on click event of this button, we're just going to transition a panel into view in this card. It's panel card 11. Let's go look at that. So here we have our about panel card. And all we have on this is a freeform container. And if we go take a look at the container itself, there's not much here. There's a div ID with app help and it's got a class assigned to it. And we've got some dummy text in here. So let's go see how are we actually populating this. This is going to be handled through the uninitialized complete event. And we're going to populate the div app help, the inner HTML, with the results of a function called load app help. So let's go look at that. So here we see the load app help function. Here we define all of the HTML that's going to be displayed in the panel. And if you look closely, you'll see we have a button defined here. And this is the button that links to the alpha website. And we call another function called launch in app browser. And also here's our mail to link and we've got it all pre-populated so we're going to uh, mail it out to Richard at alphasoftware.com and we're going to include the subject uh, so that uh, you just need to fill out your comments and, and send it off. So here we, here we can see the launch in-app browser function. We pass in the URL and here is our command to launch the PhoneGap in-app browser. So we've taken a detailed look at the full application and I think you've got a good understanding of how it was built. I will be including documentation on this application and include the source code within the PhoneGap documentation included with Alpha Anywhere.